Hi, I'm Al Brooks, and today is August 1st, 2014. I am creating this video today because I think the E-Mini currently has several very interesting things going on, and it's an opportunity to illustrate some of the points that I make in my trading course. I'm going to be talking about the daily chart, the weekly chart, and the monthly chart. Let me begin with the E-Mini daily chart. The E-Mini is at the top of a channel and it had a wedge, three pushes up, one, two, and three, and then a reversal down. But there is a problem with this wedge. There's not much selling pressure. We have one bear bar here, one bear bar there, and that, that is very little selling pressure uh, in the past 20 or 30 bars. And the channel itself is very tight. So whenever you have a very tight channel forming a wedge top, the reversal down usually results in a bull flag, a pullback, or a trading range rather than a trend reversal. And that's why this wedge top resulted in the market going sideways. The bears tried to turn the market down from a double top here and instead got a double bottom, a high two buy above here. Uh, but given where the market is on the higher time frame charts, I'll discuss that in a few minutes, there was a, a pretty good chance that this would be the final flag. High twos, double bottoms, late and bull trends often become final flags and the upside breakout fails and the market reverses as it did here. We had a gap down um, on uh, Thursday and a very, very big bear uh, trend bar. And I think something very interesting happened on Friday. It, it may not appear significant, but Friday has a bear body, right? It, it may not be obvious when you look at this. You look at it and say, well, that's a, a doji bar, a trivial bar uh, open near the close. That is all true, but the bulls and bears are both trying to establish signs of strength. And an important sign of strength is that when the market breaks out, traders want to see a follow through bar. So if you get a bear breakout, the traders want the next bar to have a bear body. And it does not matter that the body is small. It would, it would be better for the bears if the body was big closing on its low, but the minimum that the bears wanted was a bear body and the bulls were unable to stop them from getting that. Now, we have a, a strong breakout here, so it's basically a spike in a channel pattern. So we have a strong breakout and then a channel. Channels evolve into trading ranges, and the market was a trading range here, and the market usually tries to test the bottom of the channel. And you can see we closed almost exactly at that low. Once there, the market tends to bounce, right? The bulls see this as a double bottom, one low here, a second low here, and they're hoping that the trend up will resume and that we go to a new high, maybe a measured move up from the double bottom. Here's the neckline of the double bottom, and maybe get up here before we pull back again. That's what the bulls want. The bears see this as a strong bear breakout, and they're hoping for a major trend reversal. Um, I mentioned that this is a potential final flag, so you can argue that this is a higher high major trend reversal. Um, <clears throat> we have highs here and a higher high, and the market's uh, reversing down. And we broke a minor trend line here. I could have drawn the trend line this way. So we had a trend line break sideways for about 10 bars, um, an attempt at trend resumption, and instead we reversed down hard. So this is a higher high major trend reversal gap down, huge bear breakout. This close is below the low of the past six weeks, right? So it, this bear bar, Thursday's bear breakout bar, it reversed the lows of the past six weeks, which is unusual. I mean, that's exceptional, and it's very good for the bears. It increases the chances that they will get, uh, as a minimum goal, 10 bars, two legs sideways to down. So we've had one leg down, and after whatever bounce we get, we should get at least a second leg down. The bears are hoping that they get a bear trend on the daily chart. Right now, the daily chart, I think, is always in short, which means that if I had to be in the market right now, I would be short, a stop probably above here or above here, and I probably would trade small enough so that if we do get a rally, I could add on, I could scale into my shorts, increase my, the size of my position on the rally. Now. The market's had many sell-off attempts over the past several years, and um, some were as strong as this, you know, for example, over here, right? But in every instance, the market resumed back up, 
right? They were all bear traps. You know, it trapped bears into believing that the bears were taking control over the market and that we would get a bear trend. Every one of them failed. And that is usually what happens in a bull trend. Most reversal attempts fail. They become pullbacks, bull flags, and then the bull trend resumes. Because of what's going on on the weekly and daily, uh, weekly and monthly charts, I think the odds for the bears are better this time. I do expect that we will get a sharp one or two day rally next week. I don't know if it'll start on Monday or if we go down to the trend line first and then get that rally. <clears throat> However, there's a big problem for the, uh, for the bulls. Every bull who bought over the past six weeks is currently holding a losing position and they see a very strong bear breakout. So what do you think these bulls are thinking right now? A lot of them are thinking that this breakout is so strong that the market is probably going to go lower. It's possible that it will go a lot lower. So a lot of these bulls are hoping for any kind of a rally so that they can exit their position with a smaller loss. Bears, on the other hand, a lot of the bears are saying, yeah, I think we're going to sell off, but shorting is low probability when the trend looks like this. Um, I'm going to wait until I see a strong bear breakout, and then I'll short the first pullback. So you have a lot of bearish traders who want to go short, who are not short. They're hoping for any kind of reversal up that would allow them to short uh, at a higher price, right? The stop is up here. So if they can short here, it's a better entry price than shorting down here, right? So the bears are hoping for a rally that they can short. The bulls are hoping for a rally so that they can exit with a smaller loss. And when that's the case, when you get a strong breakout like this, and both the bulls and bears want to sell any rally, the market usually has at least a second leg down. You can see here, very strong bear breakout, they got a second leg down. And what the bears are hoping is that not only does the market create a second leg down, it gets a third leg down, fourth leg down, fifth leg down, and that the market converts into a bear trend. We have a measured move um, from the height of this final bull leg and that came in right around Friday's low. Um, I think other targets are more important. I have this gap up in May circled, right? That was a breakout gap above a three-month trading range. So that gap area is a target. Here's the breakout point, the top of the trading range. So this gray line is a target. It also corresponds to a trend line on the weekly chart. So that's another reason for the market to come down here. And this dotted line is the 100-day moving average, and the market reversed up there back in April. Um, usually pullbacks become deeper and have more bars. Here we had about six or seven bars down, and we hit the 100-day moving average. Here we'll probably get more bars down and probably at least fall as far below the 100-day moving average as we did here. So we'll probably fall somewhere down here. So the minimum target... Um, based on several factors, the gap, the top of the trading range, the trend line, and the 100-day moving average is all in the 1890-1900 area. It's possible that we'll just sell off there and then uh, rally sharply for a day or two or three, but I think that we will then get a lower high major trend reversal. Um, after a higher high major trend reversal and a bear breakout, the, there eventually is a rally and since a second leg down is so, so likely, given what I said about the bulls and the bears, that second leg uh, will begin with a lower high major trend reversal. Traders will be looking to sell a rally for a second leg down and some kind of a measured move down. First leg right now is here. It may go further, but first leg right now is here. You get some kind of a pullback, and then the bears will look for a second leg down that is approximately the same number of points as is the first leg. Here's the weekly E-mini chart, and you can draw a trend line across the bottoms, and you can draw a channel line across the tops. And although it may not be obvious on this chart, this bar went above the top of the channel. So we have a bull breakout of a bull channel. Uh, two chances out of three, that is going to fail, and the market's going to come down to the bottom of the channel which is the trend line, which is down here. Again, the 890, 1890, 1900 area. 
Here's that gap from the daily chart. The market also went up for a measured move based on this low, this leg up, and that high. And last week, uh, the market, or two weeks ago, the market went above that measured move target. So the weekly chart went above the top of the channel. So it tested that resistance. And then it went above the measured move based upon this leg. You know, So basically based upon this gap. This gap was a measuring gap. It led to a measured move from uh, the bottom of the bull leg to the top right here. And we got the measured move up. We went slightly above and we reversed down. So two other reasons to reverse down. There's something else I think I think that is interesting about this chart. Can you see what's going on from this low up to this high? Okay, that's 10 weeks. Every bar has a low above the low of the prior bar. So that's a 10 week bull microchannel. Every time you get a bar with a low above the low of the, uh, the prior bar, um, you're creating a microchannel. Usually the first bear breakout below a microchannel fails. So here is the first time a bar went below the low of the prior bar. So you have a bull microchannel for 10 weeks, and then you have an attempt for a bear breakout. Typically what happens is the bear breakout is bought, and then the bull resumes for one, two, or three weeks, one, two, or three bars, and it usually goes to a new high, which happened right here. But then the market typically corrects down for about 10 bars uh, and two legs. Right? That's always my minimum goal when I'm looking for a significant uh, reversal. 10 weeks or 10 bars on a weekly chart is uh, 10 weeks, so that's two or three months. So we may be at the start of a two to three month correction. Maybe we'll get down here, maybe we'll get down here, I don't know. First target is a test of that gap. Uh, the moving average, we're almost there already, the 20 bar exponential moving average and the trend line right here. So that's the first target. However, I think that whatever bounce we get will be sold and we'll get at least a little bit more down. On my website, brookstradingcross.com website, I've been talking about um, 1890 as the target. I've been talking about that for, uh, I guess, four or five weeks now. But given how strong the breakout was um, on the daily chart and now on the weekly chart, uh, I think that we're probably going to go lower than 1890. And, you know, you, you, you eventually I'll start doing measured moves down, leg one, leg two, look for gaps and do measured moves based on that. But right now I'm wondering about a prior higher low right here at 1800. So if we do get below um, the gap and the trend line, the next target would be the most recent higher low. Why is that? Because we're in a bull trend, right? The market is making higher lows. Every pullback, Every reversal attempt is a higher low. This is a pullback, stayed above that. Pullback, stayed above that. Pullback, stayed above this, all right? This one fell below that, but this is a, the channel here is very tight. This is a more important higher low, and it stayed above it, okay? So you're making higher lows. And in a bull trend, bulls tend to put their stops below the most recent significant higher low. So a lot of the bulls will get out below this low and therefore it's a magnet right everyone knows there are stops there um, if the market starts to get near there the bulls will buy aggressively to prevent it from falling below that low if it falls below this low it's no longer a bull trend it will have evolved into a trading range bears know that as well and they're trying to stop the bull trend usually a bull trend turns into a trading range once it's in a trading range it decides between the resumption of the bull trend and the reversal of the bull trend. First thing the bears have to do is convert this bull trend into a trading range and that means they need to get below a prior higher low. The bears need to get below this low, maybe even below that low, but certainly below this low. And once they do, then most traders will believe that the market is either in a trading range or possibly in a bear trend. This is the monthly chart of the E-mini. And again, here's that top of the channel. We're reversing down. We have a reversal bar last on this bar, which is July. Every bar is one month. And July ended on Thursday. And Friday, we went below the low of that bear reversal bar. 
target for the bears, you'd say, uh, first target you would say is the bottom of the channel. When the market reverses down from the top of a channel, you look at the bottom of a channel. I could have drawn the channel across these lows like I did on the weekly chart. Um, on the monthly chart, I'm using these lows, which um, is, are, it, it results in a lower target on the monthly chart, 1800. There are a couple other, I think, very interesting things about this, right? The last time, this is a 20 bar exponential moving average. The last time the market touched the 20 bar expo exponential moving average was right here, right? Um, over two years ago. And that is an extremely long time to be away from the moving average. The last time the market has been away from the moving average for 20 or, or more bars, um, or this, this many bars, 25 bars, was back in uh, 2002. I don't, I don't even have it on this screen. So the monthly E-mini is now doing something that it has not done in maybe 100 bars, 100 months. And that means what it's doing now is unusual. Anything that is unusual is climactic and um, liable uh, to have a bigger correction than what people think is likely. All right. And then there's one other uh, factor uh, that's taking place right now. Look at the number of points that the low of July is above the moving average. All right. The market has, in the, in the past 15 years, the market has only been this far away from the moving average one time here. Okay. And what happened when the market got that far off the moving average? Right. You got a, a big reversal. It got back to the moving average and it got big follow through, right? So I think that we're going to get down to the moving average over the next several months. It's possible that it would result in a bear trend. I don't think so. I suspect this is more likely because this is a small pullback bull trend, right? Uh, a bull trend that's gone on for a lot of bars, 20, 30, 40 bars, right? And all the pullbacks have been very small. You know, one, one bar, one bar, one bar, right? One bar, you know, two bars here, right? So. When you have a small pullback bull trend, the first bear reversal usually does not go very far. It usually goes down for one, two, or three bars, and then the market tries to test up. Uh, maybe we'll get a double top, and then a, uh, a measured move down, and maybe go lower. But right now, on the monthly chart, we're still in a very strong bull trend, and the first reversal down from a small bull, pullback bull trend usually does not result in a bear trend. It usually results in a bull flag, right? So right now I think that on the monthly chart, um, yes, we might sell off for two or three bars, two or three months, maybe four bars, four months, right? Maybe we'll get down here, right? But the market will still be in a bull trend and it probably will need a major trend reversal before it can convert into a bear trend. There are a couple ways that it can turn into a bear trend without a major trend reversal. One is a huge bear breakout. So for example, if August fell down here, maybe 300 points, 400 points down, you know, something like this, all right? If we get a big, big bar like that, that could convert it to a bear trend. And then another way is an endless pullback. So it gets a small pullback for one bar, two bars, 10 bars, 20 bars, 30 bars. Uh, at some point when that happens, Traders will say this is no longer a bull trend. It's a bear trend, even if the pullback is uh, not falling steeply. When you do get an endless pullback like that, at some point the bulls give up and you get a bear breakout. And at that point, the market would clearly be in a bear trend. Um, that's an unusual phenomenon. It's probably not going to happen, right? But that is another way that a, a very strong trend can turn into a bear trend without first having a major trend reversal top. Here's an example of what I said might happen, a strong reversal, right? So you have a bear trend and a strong reversal up. Eventually, the market will form a higher low major trend reversal here, right? So at some point, even if we get a small pullback uh, bear trend, uh, an endless pullback that becomes a bear trend, at some point, there'll be a lower high which means at some point there will be a lower high major trend reversal. But initially, if this is going to become a bear trend, it probably would need an extremely strong bear breakout, not likely, 
or it would need an endless pullback lasting 20 or 30 bars, in other words, two or three years. Also not likely. More likely, the best the bears will get is uh, you know, two, three, four months down, creating a bull flag, and the bull will try to test up to a new high. There's one other point I wanted to illustrate on the monthly chart. This is the same E-mini monthly chart, but I'm showing more bars to the left. We had a, a breakout above a big double top, and the market has not come back to test this breakout point, which is around 1650. And markets like to test breakout points, so it's possible that we could work down to test this high or this high over the next you know, 10, 20, 30 bars, the next one, two, or three years. Uh, it's too early to say that. Right now, we have an extremely strong bull trend, and any reversal attempt will probably become only a, uh, a bull flag, and the market will uh, have at least one more new high. Again, I'm Al Brooks, and thank you for watching my video, and I hope that you find uh, some of the information helpful. Thank you.